Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. So let's just jump into it. I got a question here I thought would be interesting for people. Hi Stefan, I've been learning Python for two months and have completed uh, several modules and various Python courses around the interwebs. Problem is, even though I know significant amount of Python, I don't feel closer to getting a job freelancing or otherwise. And the problem is further compounded by the avalanche of resources on the web. Could you please suggest what approach should I take to get a job as a full stack, as a full stack developer with focus on Python? I work part time and so I have 40 to 60 hours a week to work on this. You don't need 40 to 60 hours a week to work on this. You can get this done with far less hours, but if you have 40 to 60, then fantastic. So, what you have to do once you have your fundamentals, and I'm not sure if you do, he didn't specify whether he did my web stack course. So first of all, you should do my courses. A lot of the problems that people have out there is a lot of these courses kind of teach all kinds of little bubbles here and there about coding. They don't know how to think like a coder. Perhaps you know all that. So perhaps you have your fundamentals already. Maybe you feel comfortable writing code and you feel that you're ready to go, but you don't know how to take it from being able to write code to uh, to get a job. So how do you get a job? Here is the steps rules of getting a job. Here are the steps. Number one, learn your fundamentals. So I'll assume that you have that. Number two, you have to put up a website. Even if you want to do Python coding outside of web, put up a website. Your website is kind of the modern day, the 2020 business card. You put up the website. Uh, number one, make sure that website looks good. Even if you're selling yourself as an AI developer, make sure that website looks good because people are going to judge you based on the quality of your site, how it looks and how easy it is to navigate. Uh, they're going to base they're going to base a lot of their initial opinion on you as an individual based on that. Much in the same way, if you go out on a date, if you go out on a date, people are going to judge you based on how you dress. And whether you have, you know, you're, you're, you're properly groomed and so on. So make sure your site looks good, no matter what type of programming work, development work, any type of work you want to do. Number two, what you want to do is once you get that site up, you want to go out there and do one or two, maybe three small, free, freelance gigs working for somebody or stash work for a month or two working for somebody just so that you can build up a bit of a portfolio and complete a real world project for somebody else from a to z doing a bunch of tutorials on youtube or wherever else and uh then saying look i did these tutorials it's not going to sell it a big part about being a developer is being able to sit down with people figure out what they want figure out the requirements, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I teach this, my freelance course, step by step. Um, and again, not trying to be a shameless self-promoter, but I'm just saying that this, this is key to the whole process. Being a developer is not just being able to write code. At the end of the day, you're, you're, you're solving problems. You are using your knowledge of development to solve problems for particular clients. And that's why I always say you got to be language neutral, meaning for some projects, you may want to use Python. You may use uh, a certain module in Python to solve the problem. But other times you may want it to do just um, JavaScript or other times you may want to go native mobile development, with iOS and Swift. It depends on the needs of the project. When you become an advanced developer, you will be able to do that. You have to say, you have to get away from, I want to be a Python developer, or I am a Java coder, or I am a, a PHP developer, etc. You want to get away from that mindset and you want to be more like the world's best mixed martial arts who are, they have a, a, a particular forte. They may be more inclined to be strikers or they may be inclined to be grapplers or uh, submission fighters. But at the end of the day, they're mixed martial arts. They have a plethora of skills, a range of skills that they can apply given the circumstances. Um, of course, again, you have your preferred uh, languages, you have your preferred frameworks, no question. 
but you just got to be open-minded. In my career as a freelancer, I would walk into projects and I would sit down and I would say, okay, what do we, what do we need to do here for you? And I'm talking to the client and I take notes. I say, okay, uh, what's your budget? And they'd say, why do you need a budget? Can't you give me a quote? Well, there's many ways to build a house, right? There's many different types of houses. There's many ways to build a car. Do you want a Ferrari or do you want a, a Toyota? Right, so you go in there and you uh, you assess the needs of the project, and then you choose the technology stack accordingly. So that's what you have to do. That's what the whole process. That's why uh, getting your first free freelance job is the stage work, which allows you to learn how to take your coding skills and to put it into something real. You have to understand, as a real world developer. Um, especially when you're first starting out, it's not all going to be like, oh, step one, do this, step one. It's not going to be super clear about the way in which uh, the, which particular code or particular libraries you might use, etc. Every project is very uh, every project is very uh, circumstantial. It's, it's unique. That being said, yes, there are set processes. There are. Uh, particular libraries and what they call them design patterns in programming. There are design patterns that most of us use most of the time. And uh, but design patterns are guidelines and not necessarily uh, something set in stone. You may break away from a particular methodology or design pattern or structure based on the needs of the project. But generally speaking, you fall back to these um, design patterns and these set structures. I'm going off on some nerd tangents here, so I apologize. So bottom line is fundamentals, get a website up so people can assess who you are. Um, make sure it looks good, the website. And if you're not good at design, then just get a template and modify it. Then you go out there and you want to do one or two freebie projects. Even if you don't know all the tech that you may need to implement for a particular project. Make sure it's a small project. Don't do a huge project, a small project. And then just learn as you go. I call it uh, the need to nerd philosophy. I'll leave you with this because this is a very common concern that people have. Um, no coder in the world, no developer in the world knows everything about development. In fact, no developer in the world knows 5% about what's out there. Uh, and I'll take it a step further. There's no Python developer in the world who has used more than maybe 5% of Python. It's uh, The development world is vast, and there's so many options, and that's why it's so important that you, you get away from trying to think about coding as um, learning the key frameworks or the key technologies that will make you a pro, and then you go from there. No. What makes you a pro is your ability to code and you'll use whatever technology are in demand at the time. That's another major thing that people have to get into their heads is that um, you may think that Flash Action Script is the best programming language ever invented and you, you can't understand why people would not want to use Flash Action Script. Now, if you don't know what that is, at one point, 10 years ago, it was huge. Uh, it was huge. It was so dominant. Uh, now it's dead because uh, Steve Jobs effectively killed it, amongst other things. But so you have to, you know, ad adapt to the times. So right now, React is very popular. Vue is rising up in terms of front end. The web stack, HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, perpetually popular. On the server, JavaScript, Node, very popular. Uh, PHP. Uh, very popular PHP, PHP Laravel. Uh, also, just you know, more low level WordPress development, uh, content management development. Heck, I've even seen job listings for people uh, uh, who get paid pretty good salaries being Wix developers, basically implementing Wix, right? Yeah, anybody can use Wix, right? They can just point and click, but when you, you know, there's information architecture that has to be taken into consideration. Um, planning out the global strategy uh, with the site vis-a-vis -vis social media marketing and search engine marketing. Um, then if you want to get into functionality, uh, shopping carts, uh, private groups, etc., then it's a whole new level. 
Now, it's not just my opinion. Even Wix has an API layer uh, with JavaScript, right? So they know that, yeah, the point and click is fine for simple sites, but then if you want to go beyond the cookie cutter uh, templates that they provide, then you got to get into code once again. Now, so anyway, that's pretty much it. I've gone off on tangents. So you got to get out there. Fundamentals, put up a site so people can judge you and you can say, hey, check out, I'm, I, I can do clean work. And do small little projects, and, and you're going to go in there blind. You're going to go in there like, oh, boy, I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but don't worry. That's why uh, God invented uh, Google, and that's why when you're armed with Google and you have um, good fundamentals and you'll be able to research, blah, 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 blah. okay, I need to use React or I need to use Vue here. Or now this is a simple WordPress type of implementation here and you put it together. If you're wondering how you, how you uh, handle the client, how you budget it, et cetera, et cetera, shameless self-promotion, my freelance course, which I'm selling for pretty cheap now, um, the price is about to go up, uh, that will guide you step by step. In fact, I've had a lot of people tell me that my freelance course really put it all together for them. I showed them how to take their coding skills and how to monetize it. Monetize is just a, a nerd's way of saying make money with it. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. I was answering a question with foot to me. Very common question. Again, learning how to code is not just learning the code. You have to learn the environment around the code. You have to understand the workflows and, and you have to understand um, the various options that you have. At the end of the day, when you're writing code, you're just sending commands to a computer. If you're writing JavaScript code, you're probably sending commands to the web browser or maybe on the server. You're writing Python code, uh, you know, you're, you're doing all kinds of different things. One of Python's strengths is, is its flexibility. Anyway, that's it for now. Bye-bye.